Welcome back, YouTube. Last night, we, uh, left off at the end of, uh, was it Elia? Yeah, Elia's chapter in, uh, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, and we're back with another night full of, uh, zombie-killing action. As soon as I remember what I'm doing, because controller's back to me now. Uh, for you guys, it's only been, like, a new part. Uh, did we already read that? No. I don't think we actually did read that. Uh, Edward Royves' study is filled with, uh, arcane knickknacks, mementos of yesteryear, and other cultures. The odor of ancient texts is faintly noticeable under the peppering of dust that covers the ah, covers every surface except for one. The dust has been the center of activity, and not a mode of dusk is on dust is on it. Here Alex's grandfather had worked, perhaps even hours before the end. And seeing as the tome of eternal darkness was on his desk, that might have implications. Hmm. These candles are lit. I do not think they were lit before. No, uh it there shows seems to be a thing about candles just lighting in this game. Just like every other survival horror game, you know how it is. Full shrine of candles, placement is deliberate, corresponding to etchings, we should know what to do by now, uh, it's sunrise in the diagram, uh, what is this, X, A, activate the little trigger, oh hey, it was a fake bookcase, nobody would think to actually check the books. Quick sequence, the candles being lit, the hidden panel opens, there is a message tube inside, we will take it. Let's open it, open it, it's like Christmas. An antique leather bound message tube. The kind that used to transport sealed message scrolls. It appears to be unopened. There might be something inside. Should Alex open it? Yep. Chapter page entitled, Suspicions of Conspiracy. It's a giant eye. Your presence is welcome, Majesty. As always, I am honored. Our dealings are a pleasure to us both, then. He lies. As do we all. What is this flaw you wish to discuss with us? My concern is with the other ancients. Ulioth, Shaturga. Should they unite with Mantarok, they will doubtlessly possess enough power to vanquish even thee. As darkness abhors light, and light abhors dark, the others will not, cannot, join forces. Mandarok will be bound, and the others will sink into insanity when I return. As has been foretold. I was unaware. There is much you do not know. And much you never will. Be certain to retrieve Mandarok's essence. It is necessary to cement our place in then what of Charlemagne the Frank? What do you intend for him? The Frank is an instrument of light. He seeks to unite Europe under his banner. With this in place, my guardians will be hard-pressed to perform the functions you require. For your own schemes, Pius. Think of your future. Then Charlemagne will be removed from the picture. Make sure. Or perhaps one, then the other? Just make sure he is removed from power. Of course. He is as good as dead. After the cutscene has ended, the message tube is no longer needed. Alex discards it. So there we have the first uh, vision of... We don't want to use that yet. I'm going to quickly explain before we go into another cutscene. Uh, that was... Pius speaking with Zelototh. We uh, chose the uh, green artifact at the beginning of the game, so Pius worships and gains power from Zelototh. It's also worth pointing out that uh, most of the ancients Uliath and Chaturga are voiced by one voice actor. Zelototh has two. Also the only female voiced ancient. And there's some minor spoilers for you. But I think right now we know all of their names. Yeah, yeah we just learned all their names in the cutscene. They just mentioned all their names. I spoiled nothing. Okay, my bad. <laughs> It's late at night again. We didn't get started almost quite as early as we planned to. Um, she has some of our favorite lines as well, especially that whole, uh, he lies. As, as do we all. Uh, <laughs> it's also interesting to, like, note the interaction of Pius and Zelotath, how, like, they kind of seem to be just, like, more working together than Pius being a complete and total servant. Uh, I'll, I'll go into more detail after we, like, actually get somewhere, maybe. From my research, it is apparent that the endeavors of mankind 
a mere puppetry at the hands of the ancients. Whenever a king vows reform, the ancients move quickly to stifle it. Under the auspices of Emperor Charlemagne the Frank, the new Holy Roman Empire was at the height of its power. It 1480. Hanc mit ad dominum et imperatorum nostrum, carolum magnum francum. Deliver this to our Lord and Emperor Charlemagne the Frank. No one but him must see it. They are words for his eyes only. At once. That's not suspicious at all. And our Kuhn protagonist thinks the exact same thing. Let's have a little look see. <gasps> Oops. Apparently it was words what for the sorcery is this? A spell? I am bewitched. If this was meant for Charlemagne, then what will become of him? I have to warn him of this treachery. Whoever the student is, he's loyal to king and country. Uh, the spell on the school doesn't actually exist in the game. It was also a six-point spell. Six-point spells don't exist in the game. This is also our first introduction to the uh, Oublier Cathedral, which is a recurring location in the game. Anthony cannot leave yet. Charlemagne must be warned of the conspiracy against him. Okay, dude, what's up? After Anthony briefly describes his mission, the monk informs him that Charlemagne was last seen in audience with the bishop in the visiting chamber, which would be right over here. We can't quite go there yet. Muffled voices emanate from inside the bishop's visiting chamber. However, the door is locked, just like every other door in this game, and Anthony will need a bishop's key to enter and gain an audience with Charlemagne. Yeah, so gaining a key is apparently all you need to talk to a king. Anthony's presence is questioned by the monks, feeling that he has trespassed upon sacred ground. The monk seems rather subdued, perhaps out of respect, or perhaps out of fear. Uh, it's important to note this is 814 AD, simply because uh, our prior chapter with Elia took place 1050-ish AD. So this is actually happening prior to that, and it's a little bit of timing, oddity, whatnot. This is really disturbed with grief and despair, the monk sobs pitifully. He recounts that this is not the only death to have occurred recently, and wonders if perhaps the order is being punished for a wavering in faith. Hmm, apparently somebody died, and there is a casket. Monk cordially greets Anthony, however he brings grave news of the loss of one of his order, who fell from the tower to his death. Yeah, that could hurt. His tone is guarded, leaving Anthony wondering if, indeed, this is the truth. Because nothing is ever what it appears in a survival horror game. Okay, praying dude, what's up? Can I talk to you? He ain't gonna talk to us. Nope. He's too good for Um, us. let's take a look at the body. A funeral casket made from unfinished wood. It is not properly sealed and probably be opened. Okay, would Anthony really open the casket? No, but let's do it anyway. <gasps> oh my god, what is oh, it? This is devil's work. We should get out of here. Is it just me or does that look like fingers are coming from his chest? Proven. That would be his ribs. Feared the most. This poor man has been the victim of great evil. Look how his body has been defiled. As if something has burst out from inside him. Here, take this for your protection. And find the bishop. He must be informed of this horrible discovery. Wait, did nobody ever open the casket before him? Like They have they... a random sword lying around, seriously? And, and I'm just surprised that nobody ever opened the casket. Maybe it just wasn't like the tradition back then. Like nowadays, sure, we look at the. Uh, Somebody must have put him in the casket. Pooing inside the casket. Anthony sees the body of a monk. Because clearly he wants to look at a dead body. His raiment is that of his order, stained with blood that is seeped from many grievous wounds. It is truly a disturbing sight, especially in such poor graphics. <laughs> hey, at least it's still not N64 graphics. Eh, probably you saw a similar engine to the N64, seeing as this was originally designed for N64, and I assume this was one of the earlier chapters done. Okay, shouldn't the bishop be in the uh, bishop's antechamber? <laughs> and so all of the priests just leave, or the monks leave for no apparent reason. Yeah, 